Irish people love property. In Ireland, we tend to have a fixation on property and in particular, owning our own property. And we'll run through the pros and cons of investing in property in Ireland in another video. But for this video, we're gonna run through the main tax implications of renting a property in Ireland. If you already own a property in Ireland or have a room in your property that you're interested in renting out, or just gonna invest in a rental property, you do need to understand what taxes you need to pay on the income that these properties generate. In case it wasn't obvious already, we're actually not tax professionals. We do take information from revenue.ie and try to make it more easily understandable for you. So Revenue, if you're watching, you're welcome. So in short, although we do put a lot of time and effort into making sure everything is correct, make sure to do your own due diligence on your personal situation. Okay, on with the video. Step one is to calculate your income. This might sound easy, and it could be if you only have one room rented. If, however, you're renting multiple properties in Ireland and abroad, first and foremost, you can probably afford a tax consultant. Don't really need to watch these videos. However, if your tax consultant is busy, it is important for you to understand this yourself. Basically, it's crucial to understand your overall rental income and what is taxable and what is not. If you haven't already, it might be helpful to set up a second bank account, and this can be used for all your property income and expenditure, and will just make tracking in general a lot easier. Step two, calculating your expenses. Similar to investing in stocks, the tax you owe on your rental income is on your profits only. This means that you can deduct certain expenses before calculating the tax owed. Certain is the key word here, as not all expenses are deductible, so it is really useful to keep an Excel sheet to track all your ingoings and outgoings for when you come to calculating your taxes. And of course, don't forget to hold on to all those receipts and invoices too. Some examples of deductible expenses might include repairs and maintenance, insurance premiums, property fees, for example, advertising, legal and accounting fees, mortgage interest, and capital allowances, otherwise known as wear and tear allowances. The wear and tear allowance is allowed at a rate of 12.5% of the cost of say furniture and fittings for your rental property over an eight year period. So for example, say you buy a lovely new leather sofa for a thousand euro for your rental property, the wear and tear allowance of 12.5% for this is 125 euro per year. And you can claim this against the rental income for the next eight years. For a full list of allowable expenses, you can check out Revenue's website or via the link in the description below. And if this isn't totally clear just yet, don't worry, we'll be including the wear and tear allowance in an example later on in the video. Step three, allowances and deductibles. If you rent out a room in your primary residence, you have a tax-free allowance of 14,000 euro per year, and this is called the rental room relief. That's a cool 1,166 euro tax-free income per month. Quick note, if you go one cent over that allowance, you will be taxed on the full amount. So make sure that if you are availing of this relief, you keep it under that 14,000 per year. To be eligible for the rent room relief, you can only claim rent relief on individuals who are renting from you on a long-term basis. Renting your spare room to a mate for 12 months? Eligible for rent relief. Airbnb in your room while you're in Bali for a month? Not eligible for rent relief. Oh, I like all these things, let's see. <laughs> Basically, a simple distinction is whether the person is a guest or a tenant. If they're a guest, they're taxed. If they're a tenant, you can get the rent relief up to 14,000 euro. If you qualify for the rent a room relief, your income is not chargeable for USC, PRSI, or income tax. However, if you are claiming this relief, you can't deduct the expenses that we mentioned earlier. Therefore, if there is a year where you foresee a lot of expenses, it might be worthwhile opting out so you can avail of some of these allowances. In order to do this, you must write to Revenue to say that you want to opt out of the rent -a room relief. One important thing to note is that you must declare your rent -a room relief in your income tax return, which is either through the Form 11 or the Form 12, even if your rental income is under the 14,000 euro threshold. When filing, you should include this in the exempt income section of the tax return. Step four, how much to pay. Net rental income is added to your other income, i.e. it's charged at your marginal income tax rate. This marginal rate will depend on your earnings and whether you are a single person, married, etc. For example, a single person with a combined salary and rental income that totals more than 35,300 euro at the time of recording will be liable to pay 40% on their rental income plus USE and PRSI. The good news is that, like stocks, you can write off allowable losses against future gains in your rental income. So in a given year, if you make a rental loss, i.e. your rental expenses are greater than your rental income, you can offset those losses against the future taxes on the profits from your rental income. 
So this might be applicable if you've just started with your rental property, you're buying new furniture, a new dishwasher, etc, etc. One important note is that you can only offset your losses against other Irish rental income. So you can't offset your losses against crypto or stock investments that you make gains on. So let's take a quick example using Revenue's website. So we see here that Jared rents a property to a tenant at a rate of 850 euro per month. His gross rental income for the year end of 2019 was 10,200 euro. On the left hand side column here under values, we can see the various allowable expenses that Jerry can use to reduce his taxable rental income. This includes insurance, capital allowances, registration fees, allowable mortgage interest and repairs. So as mentioned earlier with wear and tear allowances, if Jared made a capital purchase, for example, in this case, say a sofa or a fridge at the value of 650 euro, he can offset this purchase at a rate of 12.5% per year for eight years. So for this year in question, the allowable deduction is 81 euro, i.e. 12.5% of the total of 650 euro. So once you've accounted for all your allowable expenses, you of course just total them up, subtract it from your gross rental income, and you can see here what your total net rental profit is. So let's assume for the sake of this example that Jared is a single individual earning 38,000 euro per year PAYE. So when you add the 38,000 and the 8,049 euro he earns from his rental property, he is in the higher 40% tax bracket, so he'll pay 40% income tax on this amount. So in this example, Jared's taxable income at the higher 40% rate is just over 3,219 euro. Step five, filing your return. Rental income must be declared on your annual tax return. Unlike PAYE, which is a tax that your employer takes directly from your paycheck, rental income is self-assessed and therefore you have to declare it. There are two forms that you need to be aware of when filing your return, Form 11 and Form 12. So Form 11 is for chargeable individuals, refers to self-employed, non-PAYE earners and or PAYE earners with 5,000 euro or more in non-PAYE income. This could include money from side hustles, renting your room on Airbnb, or of course, a rental property. Form 12 is for regular PAYE earners, i.e. people with jobs. You file Form 12 if you are a regular PAYE earner, but of less than 5,000 euro in non-PAYE earnings. For example, you may have a side hustle selling shirts, but the annual net profit you make from the shirt sales is less than 5,000 euro. And then one final note on foreign rental income. Your domicile, or essentially the place that you call home, will affect how your foreign sourced income is taxed in Ireland. A person who is resident and domiciled in Ireland must pay tax on their worldwide income. So if you're lucky enough to have a number of foreign rental properties and you make a loss on any of those rentals, you can offset those losses against losses from your other rental properties, but only on other foreign rental properties. You cannot simply offset the foreign rental property losses with rental losses from your Irish source rental income. We're not gonna go into the domicile rules in this video, but we will leave links in the description below to find out more. In certain cases, you may have to pay tax in the country where your property is located and in Ireland, but this will depend on your residency and domicile status. If this situation is applicable to you and you do have to pay some foreign taxes, you can potentially deduct some of those foreign taxes against the taxes that you pay in Ireland. Whether or not the country in question has a double taxation agreement with Ireland is gonna be the decider whether and how much tax you can offset. As with all investing, diversification is key. Although having your own rental property, or any property for that matter, might seem like a distant goal, it is still really important to understand rental income and the taxes. And you never know when you might have an opportunity to rent out a room on Airbnb or convert a garden shed into a source of income. If you're enjoying our videos, make sure to subscribe. We release new videos weekly. And if you like this video, drop us a like. Otherwise, see you in the next one. So in shirt. Shirt. So in, We're in shirt. So in skirts. And shirt. <laughs> when filing, you should put your rent room relief rental link on the <laughs> 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 <laughs>